Hey everybody, Games Plus James here and welcome back to our Unity 2D tutorial series where we're taking a look at all the basics you need to make your own platforming action game full of awesomeness and full of adventure. Uh, today we're going to take a look at adding a health bar to the game for the player and also adding uh, health pickups so you can increase your health whenever you get damaged because nobody wants to just get damaged forever and ever. So the health system we're going to create today is actually the exact same one I've used in my own game, Portal Knots. Portal Knots is a retro 2D platforming action adventure game featuring multiple characters that you can switch between and each one has its own unique abilities and they're combining to use their skills to fight an evil invading force all across the multiverse. Portal Knots is now on Kickstarter where you can download a demo of the game to try it out for yourself and you can also get awesome rewards for back in the game. You can get a copy of the finished game itself, the soundtrack from the game, an exclusive art book featuring designs and concept art. You can get your own levels or enemies designed or even get a pixel art version of you or your own character design in the game with an exclusive art piece featuring your character in game. So if you found these tutorials helpful make sure you follow the link on screen now and pledge to Kickstarter and help support the game and make it as awesome as it can possibly be. And when you're all done with that we'll continue learning how to put a health bar and health pickups in the game right here right now so what we need to do is take a look at our ui system that we already have in place if we zoom out up so we can see our ui stuff we see we've got the we just change this game here we see we've got the whole score health and time all in one corner here and that's fine but it'll look a bit weird if we have a health bar here instead of the number three in the middle of these numbers so what we're going to do is we're going to move some of this stuff around so We'll keep the health on this side. We'll put the so we'll put the time in the middle. So at the moment it's anchored to the top left, but we'll anchor to the uh, the top center here. And then in our time counter and time title, we'll anchor these to the top center as well, and we'll move it over. If it will move, here we go. So it's roughly in the middle, close enough. It's it's okay. Uh, actually, no, we can set the position there to zero so there we go it is perfectly in the middle perfect uh, and now for our, our score we're going to move that over to the top right so we'll instead of this stuff here again we'll do that and with the child objects we'll do pop them in the top right as well and we'll drag these over here out of the way and now not our life system with our health system what we want to do with this is just drag it up into the corner here oh no we don't want to do that actually we want to drag the two items up into the corner like that okay uh, so at the moment we have a, a, a script on our health counter here that updates the number whenever you get hit and changes it out but we don't use that number anymore so what we're going to do we're just going to disable this object we could delete it but we'll just disable it for now uh, and what we're going to do is click on health system here and if we right click on it actually and we go UI and slider so this slider is what we're going to use to represent our health so our slider here has values and we can slide this up and down much like a health meter would work uh, you can see that like say for example on the left hand side of this bubble would be your health and on the right hand side would be how much health you could possibly have but obviously this looks very bland and not very helpful for us but we'll just start off with this we want to set our max value our maximum health value is five that we've used before so we'll use that again here and you can increase that if you want within your game or whatever way you want to do it. And we also want to use whole numbers because we don't want them to have like three and a half health. That doesn't really suit our purposes here. So now we can see it jumps to certain points, starts to zero, jumps to the end. Perfect. But we don't want this bubbly thing on here. So let me just zoom in so we can see it a bit better. Uh, if we open up the slider here and um, we have a handle slides. Is a handle? Yes, handle, handle slider. Yeah. So we have the handle here, so we're just going to delete that out, so we don't want that anymore. We've got our fill area here. If we grab our fill, actually I think we can just delete the handle slide area altogether, yeah. Um, actually I'll undo that just in case I wasn't supposed to do that. I'm not sure, I can't remember off the top of my head now. We'll disable it, yes, that's a much more sensible thing to do. If you're not sure whether you should delete something, just disable it, and then you know you're not going to do anything too crazy with it. So. So this is the fill, this is the like bright white area here. What we're going to do is, instead of UI sprite here, we're going to set this to none. So it just makes a solid bar there. And we'll make this, since this is going to represent the health that the player has, we'll make it green. Because green is like universally a health color. So we'll make that green like that there, perfect. And um, we'll go to our background and we'll get rid of that as well. So it's, sorry, it says here background for the source image. And instead of that, we'll go to none up here. 
and we'll make this color red perfect so now if we go back to our slider here if we change the value we can see we've got a health bar now that has like green and red in it and it, it looks a bit more like a health bar the only problem at the moment is if we put it down to zero value it still has a tiny bit of health obviously if we have zero health we want the player to be dead and it doesn't quite go all the way up to full either so the way to fix that is we we'll just get rid of this handle slider now because I'm I'm sure now that we don't need it so the way to fix it is we have this fill area here and you can see that like the green bar kind of overfills these little zones here so what we're going to do is switch to this tool and we're going to drag this in so it clicks into place and we'll do the exact same on the other side so it clicks into place just like that and then we grab our fill area and we'll grab that out to the upper limits of everything and now if we go back to our slider so we can see it's, it's full it's up to the very top and we drag it down the bottom it's all the way empty so that's perfect that's exactly what we want to happen so now we need to place this slider in our system overall so if we go up here we want to make this go in the top left again because we've got it here or have the anchor in the top left sorry and then we're going to drag it into position here switch to the move tool we'll just drag it up here it's a little bit big though it's a bit kind of on it takes up a little bit much space so, like if we maximize this I suppose it looks okay there but we'll, we'll make it a tiny bit smaller so we'll just instead of weight 160 we'll make it just say 120 I think that works a bit better so we'll drag that over there so now obviously nothing's going to happen with this at the moment it's not doing anything for us it's not uh, solving any issues that we've had it's not going to represent our health in fact our health system will probably be broken now because we've disabled the health counter mechanic actually no it won't be broken because that just gets yes the health counter is broken yes because we're not using the health counter anymore we're not with no way of the player knowing how much health he has or anything like that so now he just he takes some damage but it doesn't actually do anything to him so that's obviously not what we want here so we'll go back in and we need to attach a script to our slider that we just created so what we're going to do is take our health manager script and we're going to make some a few slight changes to it so we're just going to copy it from here and paste it into our slider so the way we do that is on the little mechanic here if we drop that down we go copy component and on the slider we can either right click can we right click on our components no we can't okay but we can go to this little drop down thing up here on slider and we go paste component as new and now we have our health manager script down there so what we're going to do is we're going to open this up in mono develop and we're going to make a few little changes to it but actually nothing too complicated it's, it's not a huge amount of difference between just displaying our value as just a, a number and making it interact with the slider that we've created so what we were using before was this text element to show the number and to change the number but we're not going to be using that anymore so what we're going to just comment that out with a couple of slashes like that and what that does is now it breaks a few bits and pieces so we see here text is equal to get component text well we don't have a text thing created yet so it doesn't know what to do so we're going to comment that out and the exact same thing down here so now we know that in these two places the script was um calling the element that we're using to represent the numbers so instead of a text that text text here what we're going to use is a public slider so public slider and we'll call it we'll just call it health bar just keep it nice and simple so this will be our slider um we'll leave it public that's okay yeah uh, and here we'll just say uh, health bar is equal to get component slider perfect and now in our update function here so basically what we had before was whenever the player got hurt and the health amount changed it went okay uh, what you should do is just change the text that we have on the screen but now since we're not using the text on the screen what we're going to do is change the value of the health bar so it moves up and down so health bar dot value is equal to player health and now if we save this and go back into the game here once this finishes compiling down it should yeah we see our health slider pop in and now if we hit play 
We shall see the health bar will fill up with health. Oh, we had zero, so it just started zero. But yes, now you can see our health bar is filled up with health. And if we go over here and we'll let this guy hurt us, come here towards us. Huh, it, it didn't. It seemed to give us a bit too much health, I think. Yeah. So I think our, our, our starting health is actually higher. I think I, for, I forgot I said it higher. So I think it might be eight. Oh, I didn't mean to set it on that script. On our slider script is where you want to set us. So now we set it to eight. Play again. Kill ourselves. I think that should be the right value now. Come here, you. Do some damage to me. Oh, the problem isn't in here. It's the problem is here. We're setting our max value to 8. 5. Hit play again. Kill ourselves. So max, it's held to 7, not 8. That's what it is, yes. It's been a while since we looked at the, the health value. So we're going to set that to 7. Or whatever value you set in your own game, obviously, it could be slightly different. Um, so now we have that doing damage. Uh, but we want to be able to give the player back some health when he takes some damage. We don't want just die in the whole time. So what we're going to do is add a new uh, item to the game. Uh, and we've actually got... A, create a new... Um, art piece so yes what we've got if you download the file we've been using for our art throughout the series so far we've added a nice a nice little heart you can probably see here on the screen so what we're going to do is open our art folder here uh, go in there and as we've done before we're going to copy this and paste it in here so it draws right over the file so once again, if you just drag it straight into Unity, it'll just create an extra file because it's because Unity knows it's different. Uh, so we go in here, and then we're going to add this little heart to the game, and we we'll call this Health Pickup. Apply that change, and there's two ways we could do this this uh, heart manager or that or adding health to the player. Um, so I'll show, the, I'll show you the straightforward, simple way, but then we'll do a, a, a different way we probably want to actually use for the game. So we'll drag our health pick up here, and we'll just place it, like, here, say, so we know where it is. And we want to make sure the player can interact with it, so we're going to add a circle collider to it, and we'll make that a trigger. And we'll zoom in here, and it looks okay size, we'll make it a little bit, a little bit bigger. Perfect. Uh, and then we're going to just very simply add our hurt, hurt player on contact. And rather than hurting the player, what we're going to do is go give health to the player. So now if we go in here, and we hit play. So we've taken damage. We probably want to take this guy out. There you go. So we've taken some damage, and now if we go over here. We've added a health, but the the pickup isn't getting destroyed. It's not doing anything. It's doing. We've got our knockback script applied as well, so it's knocking back the player. So obviously, this isn't what we want to do, really, with the heart. Um, and one other thing we also have to allow for is, if the player there, he kept getting the heart pickup, and he kept his health kept getting added up and added up. But we don't want the player to be able to exceed the maximum health that we're giving him. So what we'll do is in our health manager script here. We're going to add another if loop here. So here we're checking if the player is less than zero, then he's dead. Then we're making him dead. Uh, but if the player's health, if player health is greater than max player health, then player health is equal to max player health. So we save that and pop back in to the game. If Windows will let me, here we go. 
So once that finishes compiling down, now the health bar should actually be a bit more obvious in how it's working. If we go to our health slider here, our max player health. So now we our max value here is seven, but our max player health is five. So it should only go up to five now because it won't exceed that value. So yeah, see it only goes up to five there. So if we kill ourselves, it'll only go back up to five. So now we'll, we'll set our max player health here to be seven as well. Because we've done that elsewhere in the game, so we might as well leave it at that. So if we hit play, so you can see our health is fully back again. Take a bit of damage from this guy. So now we've lost a bit of health. We're gonna add three health to us. So now we should have, we should have seven, but in case something's gone wrong, no, everything's working perfectly. So now we just lost one bit of health again. Perfect. So now we need to make sure our heart pickup here can actually do something good. So if we go down here, we go to our health pickup and we're gonna remove this component because we don't want to use that anymore. And we're going to go to our scripts folder and create a new script. We'll call this health pickup with a capital H. And we're gonna open this up in Mono Develop, and we're also gonna open up our coin pickup script because this is gonna be very similar to what we use for our coin pickup. Um, except instead of adding score, we're gonna add health. So we're gonna be able to just copy a few bits of code over and it'll make it a lot simpler from what we've used in the past. So in our health pickup script here, we're not actually going to use any of these bits, so we're gonna take them out. Um, let's have a look at our coin pickup. Here we've got points to add and we've got a sound effect to play when it gets picked up. So we probably want to do that again. We want some kind of effect to play and we might as well just use the same coin sound effect that we've used elsewhere in the game to make it nice and straightforward. Um, so we're going to go in here into our health pickup and we're going to, we need a number of health to give. So we'll give, we'll do public int health to give. And then we're going to do uh, public audio source. Yes, audio source. We call just pick up sound, straightforward enough. Uh, and that's basically all we need to do there. And then in our coin pickup script here, we've used on trigger enter 2D and we added points and we've played the sound effect and we kill the or destroy the object. So we're gonna do the exact same thing here. So we'll go void on trigger enter 2D collider, collider 2D even, other. So that'll get the other collider, that'll get whatever thing walks into the the heart pickup. And we want to make sure it's the players. So if other dot get component, no, not get type, get component. Um, we're going to check for the player controller. So basically, it'll say, is is the other thing that just walked into me? The, does that have a player controller object? And then, if that is equal to null, then it goes, oh no, it's not the player. Uh, just return. Okay. We'll return and then note, therefore the script stopped running and doesn't do anything else. So just in case any enemies walk through your hard pickup or anything like that, depending on where you place it. And then in, we go health manager dot heart player. because so we're gonna use the health pl heart player function that we've already had before. We could write a new function within health manager. If we go back in here, we can see we've got our heart player thing here. We could write a new function to say, uh, give player health, but What's the point in doing that when we can just use our heart player function we already have and instead of uh, using our health to give that we want to give them, we're going to say minus health to give. So what that'll do is it'll try to hurt the player. So say we've set our health to give to 3, what that'll do is try to hurt the player by minus 3. So in other words, it'll try to minus minus 3 from the player, which as you should know from your basic maths, Minus and a minus equals a plus, and then we give our player some health. Uh, and then we want to play the sound effect of of the player walking into the pickup. So we we'll go pickup sound dot play, and then after all that is done, we're going to destroy the game object. Cool. We're going to save that, convert it if you need to. And then down here, we go to our health pickup. And once this is finished compiling down here in the bottom corner, we're going to add that script. Here 
Here we go. And it was called health pickup, wasn't it? Yeah. Uh, say we'll give him three health. And for our pickup sound, you could use any object within the scene, or you could use you could attach a child to the object. Actually, no, you couldn't do that. That would get destroyed. But you could use any object to the sound. If you want to have a specific sound for a hard sound effect, you could have an object with that on it. It's just handy to have it all running off an external object rather than off it itself, or creating a, a an effect that plays the sound or anything. Uh, so what we'll do is we have a coin sound effect already on our coins thing here. See, we've got a effect there so we'll go back to our help pickup drag coins into that slot there and now we'll use that audio source so now if we play we should we don't quite have full health so that's actually helpful kill that guy so now when we walk over here we just should boop we get our health back we got played a nice little sound heart got destroyed as well it didn't do the knockback situation so there you go that's the basics of adding a nice little heart health pickup to your game to give you some health and also creating a nice little health bar so it, it's a bit obvi more obvious for your players to be able to see how much health you can possibly have and how much you should have at any given moment so there you go thanks for watching everybody thanks for checking out the video and like i said at the start of the video make sure you go to the portal Knots kickstarter campaign and check it out for yourself download the demo and try it out back the game as much as you possibly can and help support the game's development and get awesome rewards for doing it so check out the kickstarter campaign and i'll see you all very soon